Do not need a lot of an introduction. Uh, you probably know who Shailene is. You probably know who Pat is. You probably know who Ansel is. You might even know who uh, John Green is down there. Responsible. <laughs> responsible for turning entire forests into Kleenex. Uh, is, is that guy. We have the director of the, uh, the film next to him, uh, Josh Boone. And then the producer. The guy that watches all the money uh, with Godfrey uh, right down here. Now this is going to be a Q&A. And I get one. I get one question, uh, so I get to go first. Uh, and I'm going to address this one mostly towards the uh, filmmakers and in towards uh, John. So John, Josh, and, uh, and, and Whit, here's the deal. You're taking a book that is, let's face it, um, a beloved, a very internal story, very internal kind of narrative. Can you talk a little bit about just the experience of getting that to leap from the page to the screen? I mean, I think the first thing you do is, you know, we all fell in love with the book, just as everyone who's read the book uh, has. And first and foremost, it's a love story and two, two wonderful characters. And ultimately, you know, you just want to honor that. You want to tell the story cinematically. And so we hired great screenwriters, uh, Mike Weber and Scott Neustadter, to adapt John's book. And at that point, I get to hand it over to uh, Josh Boone. He, we, we hired a director whose first movie we all loved. and. Uh, and he really, you know, brought it to life. Josh, did you lit the novelist on the set? I did. I, did. <laughs> I like novelists. And how did that, you guys are still sitting next to each other, so I'm guessing yeah, that worked out. Yeah, we, we, we made it through. I, I, if anything, I, I, I... Somebody else chose the order of this line. <laughs> I'm just so grateful to Josh, and, um, you know, it started with Wick and, and his co-producer, Isaac, uh, believing in the story and not wanting to Hollywoodize the story unnecessarily, wanting to tell a story um, in which the, you know, the female romantic lead has a nasal cannula, and then that carried through to Josh. Josh cared so much about the book, and, um, you know, I think the story mattered to him. You'd lost a friend not long before you started filming it, and I think, I think you feel that, you feel that on, on, in the movie you made. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, one of my closest friends died of uh, cancer shortly before I made my first movie, and uh, I mean, when I read John's book, it like was the first time that I was really able to deal with that when I was making my first movie, and it was just a really helpful book to me, and I just wanted to, I wanted the movie to feel like what I felt when I read it for the first time, and we did that with actors and music and sound and color and all that. Excellent. Uh, so the real heart of this event is, of course, taking uh, questions uh, from, from the fans. And we're going to do that uh, first uh, right here in the, uh, in the theater in Atlanta. We've got some, uh, some uh, folks lined up uh, that have some questions. Uh, we're trying to get a light up there. All right, who, who do we have first? What's your name, ma'am? Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm from Atlanta. Hi, who's your question for? Go ahead. Um, my question's for the entire cast. In what ways do you connect to your character, and what was the hardest part in playing your character? Can I answer that first as girl's father? <laughs> <laughs> So later this evening, you're going to see me in my role that was cut from the movie, unjustly, um, <laughs> Girl's Father, and as you'll see, my performance is amazing. I related to Girl's Father because I am myself a father of a girl, uh, so that was a point of connection for us. And then secondarily, we're both sort of like schlubby, middle-aged guys, which is a thing that I could relate to. No. Go on. Come on. Yeah, we're both smoking hot middle-aged guys, which is another thing I could relate to. And, uh, yeah, but now, now you guys. <laughs> Actually, that probably wrapped up the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's what you were asking about. <laughs> we all looked at John for inspiration. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, is, is there, well, what is there about, about that question? You've got to think about that when you're doing a movie like this, when you're playing these roles. Yeah, I mean, every character I ever play, I always want to find parts of myself that I can relate to the character so that he can be as real as possible. But at the same time, I don't want the character to just be myself because I am not Gus, and um, Gus is such a particular person and someone that everyone has fallen in love with through the book, and someone that I fell in love with when I read the book as well. And I really wanted to make sure that, yes, there are parts of me that I put into him, but, but there are also parts of him that, uh, that isn't me. Um, the parts of me that, that are Gus, I'd say, um, I'm also a goofy guy a lot of the time, I don't take myself too seriously. Um, uh, that would be, I think, a, a big attribute that was important in terms of bringing Gus life. Because I think if Gus was too serious and just like a cool pretty boy, he'd be really boring and the movie wouldn't really work. Anybody else want to throw in on this one? Matt. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it. it uh, I like that all these characters use different methods to deal with their pain. Um, 
Uh, and I, I, I like that my character used humor to, do, to deal with his pain, um, and that's something that I definitely uh, use in real life, for sure. Your eyes are actually quite pretty, by the way. I just... <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this is probably the most uh, tweet-worthy uh, movie of the year, so it only makes sense that we actually go to Twitter for a couple of questions. And we've already got one, uh, which is uh, uh, to John Green. Uh, do you plan to write any other books soon? <laughs> Well, I don't have another job, really. I mean, I have a bunch of other jobs making YouTube videos, but they don't pay. So, uh, unless, unless you're a cat walking on a piano. Right, uh, yeah. Cowboy. So I'm going to, uh, I will write another book. I hope to, I, I mean, this has been really fun. It's kind of hard to write while you're doing this. This is like the opposite of writing. So, um... I'm really looking forward to getting home and uh, starting again, and yes, hopefully soon. I, I'm, I'm really going to try. And maybe negotiate the movie deal before you actually write the book. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even when there's points. no plot. I'm just yeah. going to tell Wick I have a book, and Wick will be like, cool. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and how many points do you want in the box office? Shay, I can get Shay easy. Yeah. Well, we're going to make a deal uh, right here. Let's take another one from, uh, let's take another one from, the, uh, from the theater. What's your name now? Hi, I'm Tori, and I'm from Snellville. Hi. And my question's for the entire cast, and it was, what was the best mistake someone made while filming? John, let's have somebody else go first this time. <laughs> this is, uh... All right, who wants to jump in on that? Ansel. Um, uh, well, I think that one scene that we all made, a, we definitely made a lot of mistakes during was the egg throwing scene. It was, pretty, it was a pretty messy day. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, Thirty thousand dollar mistake that you guys made. Yeah, that, that was a that was a great one. We uh, someone like an egg ended up hitting the corner of the door, which is a great moment because it's like it really gets close to to Monica's mom, and it goes inside the and like it, the egg actually ended up splattering inside the house and like going all over the person's house like rugs and paintings and yeah like Picassos are in there and stuff. And got egg all over them. So, like, it ended up costing us millions of dollars, but it actually, no, it didn't. There were no Picasso's in there, I'm just kidding. She was really excited to let us use her house until that happened. Yeah, but, it, but that moment is so funny, and then, like, there are other moments where... I think I remember Jay was the, the bee. Remember the bee? Oh, my God, I forgot about... Sorry, I just could not stop. You're, Bertie, you were amazing, Bertie, and I can't stop crying. This is so emotional. She had... Who the hell can? Uh, she was, all over she was so cute. She had her head just inside Somebody the door, so she could hear. Oh my God! Yeah, Shay was just sitting like with her head inside the door and crying. And also, I, you know, it's, it's also worth noting that this is um, this is huge. This is a wonderful beginning for us. Like we're so we're so proud to share this movie with you. But it's also kind of a very and now, long I'm, now I'm going to cry. Yeah. Uh, it's also a very sad moment for us because you know we we we're all so close and we love each other so much. And this is a, this is an ending for us of, of getting to be together doing this. And so it's uh. But I just get to pass the torch. Yeah, so we're very happy to share the movie with you guys. Okay, I'm but sick of the crime. Okay, so we're <laughs> to stop crying right now. Yeah. Add it. 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 It's the scene where I, you know, Kazel first meets Gus and he's soaking a cigarette or putting a cigarette in his mouth and not soaking it. And um, we're and I'm looking at him and he's like, you know, we're talking or whatever. I'm supposed to be blushing and I look and all of a sudden I feel this really gnarly pain in my neck. You were there, right? Yeah. And um, I'd never been stung by a bee before in, in 22 years of my life, and I got stung for the first time while we were doing that scene. The bee was flying, and they caught it on camera midstream. We should put those lead scenes. Midstream, as soon as I turned my neck to look at Ansel, it got cut between the cannula tube and my, no and my oh. neck, and it stung me. And Shay was uh, dis dis in obvious discomfort, but by far her biggest concern was the health of the bee. <laughs> she, was, she, she came back and she was like, oh, it just feels so bad. It's not that bee's fault. It got stuck in the well, candle the and it got panicked and that... it stung me, and now it's going to die. <laughs> Guys, we need like... bees. We, uh, this is an important issue to bring up. We need bees, and they're disappearing. This is what this is really for. You're right. This is what this is really for. It's here for the bees. We get stung. We need to feel yeah. sad about it. I agree. Because we need more bees.
Now I need a Kleenex too. Okay? <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's take another one uh, from uh, from Twitter. Uh, this is another one for the whole cast, except for John. Uh, <laughs> Uh, did the whole cast become closer during the making of the movie? And John, uh, what was it like uh, being there during those scenes? You guys first. Checking for bats in the cave after. Um, well, yeah, go ahead. Wait, what? <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys become closer? Did, did you become closer during the making of the movie? I mean, is that really uh, happening? Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. I got two brothers for life. I got a sister. Now, I don't really understand the second two <laughs> and a kind of schlubby father thing. <laughs> and a schlubby father. <laughs> so the second part of the question is, John, what was it like being there during during the scenes? I mean, uh, it was so emotional. It was. Um, I uh, I so I'm, I am still so grateful to Shailene and Nat and Ansel for sharing um, their talents with this story for bringing those characters that meant so much to me to life and to Josh for making a movie that's so sensitive to the book. Um, yeah, I cried every day. Everybody made fun of me for crying all the time, but I, I don't cry a lot in real life. I was crying because I was so overwhelmed and moved um, that, you know, I always thought that when you make a movie, it kind of dilutes it. It kind of waters down the original vision of, of the source material. But what I learned from this movie is that when people make it with love and, and real care, uh, it can become stronger in a way, it can become more powerful, and, and it can be shared more widely. And uh, that was pretty much my experience every day on set. I felt like I was, some of the pain maybe, to be honest with you, some of the personal pain that I'd been, I had trouble letting go of that, that caused me to write the book in the first place. It felt like these people who cared about me were, were lifting, lifting me up and lifting the story up and kind of helping me to, um, uh, to be okay. And, and that's very... Uh, that was and, and that has continued and I want and I think every reader of the book and now every person who watches the movie in a way um, uh, makes the story less mine and, and more more everyone's and that means a lot to me. Well, that's getting close to public domain. Let's not go there. That's, it's, not, it's not in public domain. <laughs> but I still own it and I won't share the royalties. That's absolutely okay. the spirit. Let's take another uh, question from here in the theater. What's your name, ma'am? Hi, I'm Tynan from Peachtree City. My question is for Josh. Um, I play guitar, so I wanted to know how you picked the artist for the soundtrack. Um, I love music, and uh, I mean, I brought a, like a USB stick to Fox when I went to pitch the movie that had a bunch of songs on it that was kind of the tone of the film, hopefully. And then we had this amazing music supervisor named Susan Kent, and uh, I gave her my iTunes library and was like, this is the kind of music that I like, and she just brought, you know, wonderful artists and wonderful things to it. But. Uh, you just find songs that feel like the movie, you know, that feel tonally right, and hopefully that's the glue that holds it all together. And weren't there some songs like what Birdie did, where she no. saw the movie and then went home and yeah. immediately she read it? the book yeah. first, not to crack. She did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we had a bunch of uh, wonderful original artists, you know, come and do original songs for it that were great. All right, we'll take another question uh, from Twitter, and this one's for John, so we know there'll be a. Nice long answer. Um, in your opinion, in your opinion, what was the best part of the movie? The, in my opinion, what is the best part of the movie? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say all of it. That's cheating. Uh, the, the the eulogy scene, the, the scene in the church. Short answer. How do you like that? What? Is? <laughs> Let's take another uh, question uh, from here in the theater. If I, uh, we've got a few more people that would love to uh, find out some things. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm from Alpharetta, and my question's for John. Um, do you find it hard killing characters? And then, <laughs> is it harder for you to watch them die or to write their deaths? Well, it's very, I want to say for the record that I've never killed anyone. Uh, <laughs> it's something I'm really proud of in my life. I've worked really hard not to do it. It's a great streak that I've been on for 36 straight years. I don't kill people. People die. Um, people die in books. They also, I have terrible news for you. Everyone in Peachtree City is going to die. Um, all of you, you're all going to die. Thank you guys. Your, yeah, thanks for coming thanks out. Good night. Yeah. Um, it's all, been great doing of, this. Yeah. All of your descendants will die, and then eventually there will be no people to watch movies or even to make movies, and there will be no memory that any of us ever did anything. All right, thank you, John. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I need to be saved by another question, so we'll, we'll go to uh, Twitter. I thought you were doing some 
My quick answer to that, though, is that yes, I felt profoundly sad. I cried every day for months and months and months when I was writing this book. But it was also very, I needed to do it. I needed to write about death. I needed to write about someone young dying and argue that a, a short life can still be a good and rich and full life. Because it's real. Yeah, it does happen. So, uh, Twitter demands to know who was the goofiest on set. Nah. <laughs> nah. Was it really Nat? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Because it's a personal thing I want to know. Was he more goofy on set once he was blind? <laughs> or before he was blind? Do, getting into dangerously offensive territories. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, my yeah. answer yeah. to that is that yeah. Yeah. Nat is full, full goofy. Like, he yeah. is as goofy as the actual goofy. But here's the thing. Nat is also one of the smartest people I've ever encountered. Yeah. Which is where the goof comes from. <laughs> so goofy is a witty. Nat, Nat isn't just a goof, but he's super witty with his humor. Yeah. He's just very Isaac and which is very fault on our which is why he does so well in this movie. Yeah, he's one of the fastest wits I've ever met in my life. Congratulations! Let's take another question from my here in the theater. Go ahead, Nam. Hi, I'm Dee. I'm from Alpharetta, and my question's for Shailene and Ansel. So, since you both play characters who are diagnosed with different forms of cancer, has your role changed your point of view on how to treat cancer patients and or helped you understand how it feels to be sick, for example, like cancer perks? That's a big question. <laughs> um, I think, like, just to preface it is, we are very blessed where we are actors playing people with cancer and don't actually have cancer ourselves. And um, to cross the territory of being able to empathize with somebody who is going through that situation, I, I, I think is, is not something that I can relate to. I felt like I could empathize with a young girl who is falling in love for the first time, and I could empathize with a young girl who was dealing with different hormonal changes and learning how to navigate this new love and this new loss and everything that it meant to be in love for the first time. Um, but as far as, as having cancer, that's not something I feel like I can personally speak to because I haven't personally been through that. And, and it's so individualized for each, in, each individual who's going through their own personal experience. Um, yeah, I mean, if I were to answer that, it would be the same way you, I, you know, I've, I've never had cancer before, um, but, you know, you take what, what would come with cancer in, in that case, and there is the horrible side, which is the sickness, but for Gus, especially in the beginning, I don't want to spoil anything, I mean, wait, just like, just they just uh, yeah, they, 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 I know, but I just in general, in general, so people right, so, have cancer in this <laughs> yeah, yeah, so there's some cancer. So honestly, okay. when yeah. you first meet yeah. Gus, that he is someone who has overcome cancer, and I know that that gives people a lot of confidence. So that I I wanted to attribute that to Gus's confidence, and then when it does come back, I know that there is that a lot of anguish, and um, you know he's obviously like he's pretty tormented by the fact that he will die and that he won't be able to leave his mark and. Um, I, a very, someone close, very, very, very close to me has dealt with extreme sickness and um, I was able to draw from that person uh, and it wasn't cancer but it was a different kind of sickness where uh, people get sometimes very upset and down on, on themselves when they realize that their time is limited or if something is going to affect them and in a way that will change the way that they can function and um, I drew from that as well and then, but, but the beautiful thing I think like as Shay said, it is it is a love story, and it's through the love story that that Gus can overcome that anguish. Yeah, we I mean we had all the kids in the support group were our kids living with cancer, um, and we had them on set a lot, like eight I think eight days out of the thirty days that we shot in Pittsburgh, and um, I think that was really really important. Um, those kids have become important to all of us. There a lot of them have remained friends with with all of us, and um, I think we all saw. Um, we all saw a lot more about the complexity and richness of, of a person's life, you know, that, that, that living with illness is one, one identity among men, you know, that they're also 16, that they're also falling in love, you know, that, that it's just, it's one of the things that they're doing, but not the only thing. So, uh, back uh, to uh, Twitter, Sabrina wants to know, um, did you all feel emotionally bonded to your characters? No. 
<laughs> well, I mean, but, but some actors literally turn it on, turn it off, you know, it's, it's, it's the old acting thing. I'm going to walk in, I'm going to put on these behaviors, and then I'm going to turn it off at the end of the day. But did you all find that, you know, because it was the subject you were dealing with, that you really did have to become a bond to that character? Um, I mean, I felt bonded to him because he to Hazel, just simply, like sort of what I just said, of uh, falling in love for the first time and what that feels like and having sort of the disputes with your parents and the excitement with your with your parents and whatnot. Um, but emotionally, I've never been one of those actors who feels like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we did leave home, we did leave set um, many a time with puffy eyes and we wake up the next day with really puffy cheeks still, just from crying so much. But I didn't, I never felt like I brought Hazel's story home with me, um, maybe because we were so familiar with it that we just sort of were those characters for a while, but none of us did seem to be like the method actors in that way. One of the funny things for me is, like, I don't think I realized how much, like, I did, I guess, bond to Gus until I saw the movie, and watching him at whenever he would get emotional, it'd be like, I would get emotional at the same time. Like as if it was some sort of weird memory, like as it happened to me, because it did. <laughs> so that was a very weird moment for me. Like every time a tear rolls down Gus's face in the movie, it's rolling down mine at the same time. <laughs> that's, a, that's what the whole freaking movie is like for me, by the way. If you want to, that explains why I cried all the time. Because you are every character. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I'm mostly it's you. I'm mostly you, Shay, but I am. I guess I'm everyone else. <laughs> Let's take a, uh, another question here in the theater in Atlanta. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, my name is Alex Wolf, um, and I'm from Atlanta. Oh, your long lost sister. What? My brother's name is Alex Wolf. He's sitting right here. Mine has an E at the end instead of two Fs. You're lying. I thought you were joking. Yeah, I thought you were joking brother, too. Your brother's name is Alex. Yeah, oh. I think she knows that. Yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Just check me. Um, and my question is, what is the one question you want to be asked about the movie, and can you answer that question? Why isn't Sisyphus the hamster in it? That's for Boone. I don't, why didn't you put Sisyphus the hamster in the movie? Why didn't you have Ben Houghton have a pet hamster he really loved? It's the only thing he can love. <laughs> I guess it's gotten my fault, and it's problem. my fault because I didn't really put Sisyphus the Hamster in the book. They did mention you did mention Sisyphus the Hamster. There's a name drop. Yeah, you name dropped him, which I appreciated. Um, yeah, to me, Sisyphus the Hamster was the least important of the Imperial Foot <laughs> characters. Um, really the I was much more worried about Anne's mom. Sisyphus like I, I, I wanted yeah, Sisyphus the Hamster to sort of be a distraction and that Hazel pretends to care about, what she really cares about, of course, is, is what happens to Anna's mom, because she's trying to figure out what's going to happen to her own mom, is her own mom going to be okay after she loses uh, Hazel. And so, Sisyphus the Hamster was a bit of, uh, you know, like the magic trick where you're doing this, but secretly you're pulling out the, the rabbit. <laughs> what? Hey, guys. What? What does this have to do with the question? I, <laughs> you wanted to know uh, what question that they hadn't been asked, that they wanted to be asked and what the answer was. Yours is clearly about Sisyphus the hamster. No, that, yeah, that, was, mine. that, that was, was mine. That was yours. That was mine. Alright, guys, you got, you got any questions yeah. that you wish somebody would ask but nobody we, asks? We All mother. Sisyphus the answer for me. <laughs> yeah. Does he have a sister? Is what you're What's his home life like? <laughs> 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 Yeah. How did he, how did he, how, what's, he what's he like? Is he allergic to dairy? What, what does he like? Yeah. He is allergic to dairy. He's a lactose intolerant hamster. Yeah. But he can tolerate gluten. Yeah, he's gluten, yeah. he's gluten friendly. So yeah. it's a very specific diet. Yeah. And does he actually have a little rock he pushes up the hill, or is it just the metaphor of the wheel? It's just the wheel. It's just the wheel. Oh, okay, the wheel. The wheel. It gets into this. I it's think you've all been asked every possible question about the movie, which is why we There you go. There are no more questions left, which is why we're talking about a, a hamster named after, you know, a character in Dante's Inferno. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, or maybe it does. Maybe in the end it really is all about this. All right. Uh, what is the, uh, we've got a question uh, from, uh, uh, from the, uh, the old Twitterverse there. Uh, what is the one thing that you would really like audiences to definitely take away from the movie? Anybody want to throw in what you really, really wish they would walk away with? Oh. <laughs> Somebody told me after they saw the movie, they said, right after I saw the movie, I, I called everybody I loved and told them that I loved them. And I think that's really kind of perfect. 
for me what I got from the book and what I got from the movie. That's what I, that's how I felt after I watched Die Hard 4. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, not five. Yeah. Not five. No, not five, just four. Yeah, four, four well, I think you feel nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, before we get into the entire saga of John McClain, let's uh, uh, go up for another question uh, here in the theater. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, um, my name is Sydney Maine, and I'm from Johns Creek, Georgia. And while I love all of y'all, my question is for Ansel. Do you fear oblivion in real life? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think that I definitely have learned a lot of lessons, actually, from playing Gus. And it might just be the fact that when I did play him, I was 19, so... You know, when you're that age, you're still learning a lot of things as, as I am now, because I'm 20. I'm just learning things all the time. However, yes, I think that I, I probably still do a little bit, but less than I did before I played Gus. And I think that um, it's a good lesson to learn, because as Hazel so perfectly put, oblivion is inevitable, and if, uh, if something I'm afraid of, I should just forget about it, because... It's going to happen. Can't do anything about it. Yeah. Well, we can't do things about other things. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think that uh, Isaac might have said, hey, with great tunes, who needs robot eyes? Uh, and on that note, <coughs> Matt, how about you and your brother go play too? Great transition. Woo! From the Caribbean. Good luck, brothers. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And let's just thank Bertie one more time with such a beautiful voice and such a beautiful song. I can't tell you exactly why, but right after I finished the book, Falls in Our Stars, after I, read, after I read it, I wrote a song called Last Station. I'm going to play it for you.
the, uh, the slice here. We do have one little more morsel. Something even. Oh, you gotta do one more song? Oh, you gotta do two songs. Fine. Do another Just song. Just so you can cut off John's answer. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, that first song was the song that I wrote called the Colossus. It comes out today, so you guys don't get it. Um, and the next song I'm gonna play is Alex's song uh, that's called uh, Rule. This is my brother Alex Wolf, by the way. Yeah, my amazingly talented brother. And before we do that, I just want to thank these guys so much. I love them so much. We've spent the last three months together, and we made that beautiful movie. And I'm so proud to be a part of you guys. I love all of you, seriously. And I love you too, man. It's good to meet you. <laughs> This song is called Ready. Also, Nat sings this in the movie. Uh, yeah, when I'm all they're crying. He's hard work. He's screaming this in. Yeah. yeah. Alright, ready? Yeah, let's do it. One.
you guys. The fault in our stars. Go see it again. That was what I was saying when I so rudely interrupted the uh, Brothers Wolf. We do have one more tiny morsel for you. Uh, as delicious as any dessert you could get at uh, Orange. That's how you pronounce it, right, Orange? Uh, this is, of course, this is, of course, the famed uh, cut scene uh, featuring the author. Cut for time, not for quality. It was a running time thing done by the studio. It's a great scene, and you are going to get to see it right now. <laughs> What's in your nose? Jackie, I'm really sorry about that. No, it's totally fine. It's called a cannula. It helps me breathe. See this little friend right here? He feeds oxygen through your tube. Would it help me breathe too? <laughs> Maybe. Do you want to try it? I would love to give it to you, but I kind of could use the help. Thanks for letting me try it. You're welcome. All right, Jackie, let's go. Thank you. Take care. Bye. I think that's us. It's us. <laughs> Like a send 